Hey, what's up? This is Alex Esso. You're watching Pop Culture with my boy Pat Ratatat, where it's at. Follow him or else. Also, I was in some movies. Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. So really excited for today's episode. We have a special guest returning to the show, Alex Esso. Uh, we're going to talk all things Midnight Mass. Uh, so really excited to talk to you today, Alex. Thank you for coming back on the show. Oh, it's so great to be back, man. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. So as far as, uh, and just a heads up, guys, uh, so this is definitely going to go into spoilers for Midnight Mass. So if, oh, you, yeah. Maybe uh, spoilers. if you have not seen the show, I mean, which I don't know why you haven't at this point, because it's an amazing show. One of my favorites from, you know, from this past year. Check that out. Um, but otherwise, if you don't care about spoilers, then, you know, just stay tuned. And we're going to go ahead and uh, get into this thing. Alex, as far as, so on Midnight Mass, uh, you play uh, Mildred Gunning. Um, you yes. know, in the show. How did how did the role you know come about for you? Did Mike have like this? Because I know sometimes like directors will have you know certain actors or actresses you know in mind yeah. for a character. Did he have you particularly in mind for this character, or was there any other characters like that you initially went for on the show? Uh, no, actually, this this was one that he had in mind for me um, that he actually offered to me directly, which I was very 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 touched by <laughs> like because it doesn't yeah. happen a lot well i mean th also that when he described the part to me it sounded so demanding that i was really flattered <laughs> that he that he would trust me with something like that so the pressure was on that's uh and you i mean obviously you know at this point you've worked with mike you know several times you know from uh dr sleep midnight yeah. mass um hunting a blind manor so how how's your relationship with Mike, you know, just like evolved over the years with these, you know, these different projects that you've worked on with him? Well, uh, it's funny, like, Mike and I were very fast friends. Uh, when I worked on Dr. Sleep, I mean, literally, the, the morning I got to Atlanta, I went straight to the studio to meet everyone and do, you know, makeup tests and stuff. And within like five seconds of meeting each other, we were film nerding our asses off. And it's been like that ever since ever since that's awesome he's also yeah. fucking like a hilarious dude he's one of the funniest guys oh, like, ever i can imagine yeah. i mean and he yeah. just seems really i mean just like a really chill guy you know like overall too he's well he's so sincere he's such a film nerd i mean he really loves filmmaking and he watches everything you know that his favorite movie actually is all that jazz oh really yeah, it was one of my favorite movies too. It's it's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, but you, yeah, I mean, you can just like yeah. tell. I mean, all the details that you know, whether it's you know the shows, whether it's the movies, you can all the the level of detail that goes into things. I mean, you can tell that the guy obviously has like you know a passion for this. Loves it. Yeah, loves it. And Midnight Mass was his baby. I mean, I he he told me that he had actually written it as a as like a four hundred page movie script early early like before i think before he even made oculus maybe after but it was around that time and and i'm so glad that he expanded it into a limited series because oh man the, more time uh more more room to to breathe and you know kind of like explore the characters more when you do like a series with yeah. Some series. yeah and i think he was able to kind of get into the um the a little more of the mythology of the vampire itself yeah too like that whole desert sequence which was amazing and yeah i did not recognize Amish at all when i saw that i remember uh i mean watching the show like i saw you know saw the trailer for it and it kind of gave me um some like storm of the century vibes which yes, I yes. Storm of the century. um but you know oh, yeah. with I was just like, oh, like, you know, it's, it's about this, like, coastal community. There's this priest that shows up and this weird stuff starts happening. And then, you know, I start watching the show and you get to that, you know, the certain episode where it's revealed, like, what's actually going on. And I was yeah. like, oh, fuck. You're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Where, and where the fuck did that come from? Yeah. And yeah. But I, I thought it was such a, a clever take on, uh, like, the vampire genre, too. And you guys never, yeah. like, I've read about, like, that was on purpose. You guys never mentioned the word, you know, vampire throughout the whole series too. 
No, which I loved. I, I liked that it was a universe where, you know, the culture of vampire doesn't exist. It's not something anyone has ever heard of before. I mean, even the fact that they talk about it like it's a blood disease. Yeah. It's cool. I mean, I I don't know. The, the whole thing was just really creative. And I like that it's sort of a, a catalyst for the 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 dangers of belief. Yeah. 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 So- we're looking at the as your the show kind of like unfolds, you realize that you know even though there's a um, you know a vampire or the angel, and you think that you know it's like a lot you can go into and be like oh that's you know that's like the monster the the evil villain or whatever, but there's yeah. definitely other characters you know in the show that I would say are almost you know scarier than like the the vampire itself. Oh my god, Bev! I, I was just like yeah, this, just from like <laughs> first time seeing her, just like yeah, this this uh, definitely you know kind of creeping me out. <laughs> How great is she? Oh, she was amazing. Oh, she's, she's like my face. Complete opposite. Um, you know, I think like talking to Crystal, just like nicest person you'll meet. So I mean, that's when you you can you know so that like it, dry and funny and like doesn't take herself seriously at all. Like she's the coolest. She must have had a I would imagine a blast like playing this character. Oh, any we were cracking up anytime anyone had any scene with her. Like my favorite moment in the entire show, the whole show is in episode seven where they go running into the vestibule and see her hiding there. Yeah. Like up against the wall, try to blend in. And she almost does blend in because she's the same color as everything else in the room. (laughs) It's crazy. Yeah. It's so funny. No, she, she was, she was fantastic. And I love, uh, you know, just for the show, I love the setting where, you know, it basically all takes place, you know, on like Crocodile Island for, you know, the most part. Uh, mm-hmm. Definitely gave me, you know, like I said, that storm of the century, you know, vibes, which I love that miniseries. Um, yeah. I talk too. about the experience working on the set, like overall. And do you prefer shooting on location versus, you know, shooting at like a studio? <laughs> Depends upon what time of year it is. That's true. We shot this in Vancouver in the winter in the countryside. <laughs> and man, that was a fucking labor of love. If anyone is not familiar, winter in Canada is not the same across the country. In Vancouver, specifically, it like it'll snow and then the snow will go away and it'll we'll have frost sometimes, but mostly it's just insanely cold and wet. And at one point the because we we built the entire town we built that set on this dude's like farmland <laughs> and the whole thing turned into a swamp while we were filming it. <laughs> it was crazy. And like a propane tank exploded and like, it was so, Oh my God. It was like, it, it really felt almost like a comedy of error sometimes, but I, I, I've never experienced a film shoot where it's not like that. Yeah. I say you like, always I, run into different things. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. Like I, I don't know if you ever read. I, I read um, uh, Jean Cocteau's diary about filming uh, La Belle et La Bête. Oh no! Nope. Oh my god! What a fucking nightmare! Because it was in. It was, they filmed it in 1946, which was one year after World War II, and so France was still recovering economically. So they had no money to make this movie at all. They had to get really creative, but like everyone would get sick and then they would have like an hour of sunlight and then it would rain and then it would, and it really, it took them like three months to shoot a like three week schedule. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 So compared to that, it was really easy. Easy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I can, in a way, like, yeah, I guess, like, even though it's, um, you know, obviously that I'm sure being out there doing it at the time is probably kind of a pain just with the, you know, being cold and everything. But in a way, it, I mean, it kind can of gets be, into the moment. Well, too. well, this is where the people you work with really save your life because you're all in the shit together and you're all cracking jokes. And I would, on the really tough nights, uh, I would bring my vape pen with me to set, not <laughs> tobacco vape. I don't partake of tobacco, but when it was really cold and it was getting to those like wee hours, man, that would almost like give me a second wind. There you go. Because you kind of start to like, but, um, but yeah, like Hamish, also hilarious dude to work with, kept everyone's morale up. 
<laughs> so so we had a, a wealth of, a wealth of friends which was nice yeah and plus i mean you guys also had to uh, um you know deal with you know the the pandemic and everything because i think i had like read an interview or something where you guys had everything set up and then left and you know kind of left everything like there and then like you know came back so i mean that must have been its yeah. own intelligent itself for like five months we were supposed to film it in the summertime <laughs> <laughs> Which that would have been more <laughs> ideal for you guys. Yes, you're like ah, why? Damn it. So, oh no, and and the thing is, like, the rule of movie making is if you have to do a scene where it's warm, the weather will be freezing cold, and you'll still all have to be in t-shirts. Or if you're doing like a winter movie, they'll decide to film it in like Australia, where you're wearing parkas in 95 degree weather. Are you sweating? Just, like the way yeah and you have to pretend like ooh, so cold <laughs> yeah. right. no, that's like i always say like about 60 percent of acting is being cold and tired yeah. <laughs> mostly <Yeah. laughs> yeah. there's and, a little inspiration in there somewhere i guess yeah. and when, the series, <laughs> when uh you know the series like starts off which so this was the part that, because I remember, you know, when I had you on the show last and, um, you know, you had just like mentioned that you were going to be in the Midnight Mass, uh, Midnight Mass series. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, so I knew you were going to be in there. I, what I didn't do is I didn't go, like, I didn't look at the cast. I didn't go into IMDb or anything like that. So I just went in, you know, watched the show. And as the show, you know, it's like going along and I'm like, I'm like this is weird because I, you know, I got a couple cu- couple episodes in, and I was like, oh, like Al- I haven't seen Alex yet. You know, the we're a couple episodes <laughs> in, and didn't realize that you were playing the older version of, of you know the character. And so for me, you know, people have their their oh shit moments when you know crazy things happen in like a TV series or whatever. <laughs> um, when we got to the moment when you know you started to you know de-age. I was just like, I literally stood up and I was like, what? Wait, really? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. And I was like, that's out. Like, this has been. And then I, I was like, let me go look it up like right now. And I, was like, <laughs> I was Alex playing this character the whole time. So I had no idea that was you until later on in the series. Oh, my God, dude. You, you, you couldn't give me a better compliment than that. <laughs> it was that's like, oh, fills me with warm feelings. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it, it was, I mean, you did, yeah, such a fantastic job. And so, you know, you get to play this character, you know, as an older, you know, version of herself, like early on, yeah. who's, um, you know, has dementia. And then later on, you know, you, she starts like regaining her youth and is very much, you know, in the action. Um, what was, you know, the dynamic like of playing this character at two different times in their lifetime in this one show? It was, it, uh, it was really scary, really scary I because imagine. I have to like, I own, I'm only my actual age for one episode. The rest of the time I have to play this person with life experience that I don't have. So I have to f- figure out how to represent that honestly, because I don't want elderly women looking at that and going, cunt like you know, <laughs> the fuck does she know about being old you know what i mean like it was it wasn't enough to just like watch videos of old people you know what i mean yeah. um like i i worked with actually terry notary who mike has brought back a lot to do body work with us um but he i don't know if you ever saw that movie the square no oh oh my god pat you gotta check this out it's by the same guy that directed force majeure okay Roland Osland, yeah, and um, uh, it, it's it's about like you know the 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 hoity-toity art patron, fine art scene in Stockholm, and and it's basically like you know a, a scathing satire of people who their whole life is art and they don't know they don't would know art if it bit them in the ass. Yeah, it's basically what the movie's about. Um, and he's a, he, oh, so, oh, he also did all the body work for Planet of the Apes. Oh, okay. Yeah. All of the chimp and orangutan and gorilla movements, all of that was him. Okay. Yeah. They would like put cameras all over him and get his movements and do all that yeah. stuff. 
So I did a couple Zoom sessions with him. <laughs> kind of sucked. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely <laughs> different rather than being in person. Definitely. Right, right. Um, and, and the thing is, like, right before the pandemic started, my plan was to go to nursing homes and talk to people who have dementia. And no, just no, your plan. like just put the fucking kibosh on that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Man. So I would just I would call my grandma more than usual, which she was fine with. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So <laughs> it's nice. I was like, yeah. So what's it like being <laughs> being five? Yeah. She's like, it sucks. <laughs> I hate it. it. Don't do it. Like having to I mean, just like compl- I, I mean, like I said, you did a fantastic job, but just thank you. going from like initially you would have got to have some of like this experience like in person and just having to switch up everything and do this all over you know, a computer. I, I imagine that's obviously a lot or at least like in, in my opinion, I feel like that would be a lot more challenging to do it that way than get that, you know, in person experience. Right. Well, also, it's I don't think anyone likes that shit. You know, like in The Mandalorian, fine. Like it has to be Luke Skywalker. And I, I am so glad that they did that. And like, that's one example of when it works well. Yeah. But that's also sci-fi fantasy. It's a space opera. For something like this, that's like so grounded in reality. I mean, it's the same reason why they didn't do it for Doctor Sleep either. Yeah. Because it's, 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 it's sticky. Yeah. And it takes all the acting out of it. The whole point is that I am supposed to behave in a way that you believe like there's so many tools that just do actors jobs for them now. It's like, it's like there's pretty soon they're going to have like auto tune for actors, <laughs> you know, like you don't have to be able to sing to be a yeah. singer anymore. We can all, we can all fix that, you know, like afterwards or whatever in effects. Oh God, horrible. And like, why are we striving for that type of perfection in art? Yeah, no, it's it's Art is meant to be, especially acting. It's the messiness of the like. Oh my god, I feel so much better yeah. about being a human when I am like reassured that everyone is like pathetic and disgusting and <laughs> stupid and what all the horrible things I am. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's a universal thing. It's the thing that binds all of us together. The fact that we're all fucking animals. Yeah, no. I don't, and when you try to smooth out all the creases and make sure you look all, you know, yes. Well, but but also it's 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 not it it, it the, the the purpose of Hallmark movies is like visual greeting cards. It's only supposed to give you warm feelings, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Low stakes, no conflict, no the the the, the idea is not to represent life. The idea is to watch something while you drink Chardonnay at four in the afternoon. Yeah. 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 Something to to cut off, you know, especially around, you know, Christmas time. And right. And listen, I'm not going to take that away from anyone who enjoys that. I mean, whatever helps you get through life, it's fucking difficult. Um, But it's, you know, it's like what Scorsese said about Marvel movies being theme park movies. Not only is that what they are, but that's what that's what they're supposed to be. <laughs> that's what they're for. They're not for like, you know, examining whatever. It's a, I mean, if you look at something like like Naked by Mike Lee, yeah. Why would Marvel ever ever even want to flirt with that territory? Why? Yeah. Just say, yeah, it's theme park movies. It's just for fun. I mean, this is another thing that just bothers me about comic book movies in general. You have the rights to all the material, all the comics. Some like the Batman comics, the writing is amazing. And it's been amazing for a long time. There's so much amazing material there and they refuse to draw from it. They just look for like obscure characters they can turn into franchises, but the content, oh my yeah. god! No, there's some there's some oh. great stuff, and one of the things that I like about um, like James Gunn, for example, like he's right. I love what he does because I feel you know with his like his comic book films. I mean, he, even his like other stuff, but he he came yeah. You know, he had well, that's kind of where he started too. 
Yeah, like he had like Slither like, and fan. Troll right. and stuff like that. Yeah. And I love with him that, um, you know, he's just, he's willing to, you know, take like risk. I mean, I don't know if you've had a chance to watch like Peacemaker or um, like. I've most- been saving Peacemaker for when this job is done that I'm working on because I want to just sit down and binge watch it. And I'm really excited to see it. It is. So I like. It's so good. New but, but James on. Gunn loves that stuff, and he James Gunn like understands what the material is that he's working with. It's supposed to be fun, and he's like he's not. I lo- love that he's not afraid to go there with you know some of the material too, which is so you know like refreshing instead of getting mm-hmm. the, you know same old same old. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, if yeah. you if you haven't seen Peacemaker yet, I'll have to uh, once you watch it, I'll de- definitely have to get your opinion because I. Sure. I love it. I, I think it's a, a fantastic show. So I'm I'm hoping that he does some more work, which I was disappointed actually, that the Suicide Squad didn't do well in theaters. I was like, because I really liked that last year and it and it didn't end up doing that well. The second Suicide Squad? Yeah, the, the last was one. Was it better than the first? I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was. Because like Jared Leto wasn't in it. That's <laughs> why. I just, I thought when... <laughs> and now as we're going on like a suicide you know james gunn like comic book movie rant but this happened last time with us with star wars but i know it's so true last- no i'm a i'm a big i'm a big gun fan and i'm i've only heard good things about peacemaker it, it's one of it's one show that i'm really excited to see when they announced that suicides like the the new suicide squad was getting made and like he you know the, he was going to be the director i was like you know what he he is the perfect director for that kind of movie yeah yeah i love for marvel like uh guardians of the galaxy i i love that movie um it, i love the the first one is amazing yeah it's such a fun yeah. just like such the a first fun time. yeah they got it right that's what it's supposed to be and so like, be like and it was weird characters and I, I think just like overall in film i, I feel like I, I tend to find i'm drawn or attracted to those type of characters like more just because yeah it's not like the popular characters that everyone loves. I like those, well, those different. I find them more compelling too. They seem yeah. to, to have, they have less character, but they are more of a character. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they're usually more flawed and, you know, it's not like Superman who can do no wrong yeah. or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But that's yeah. what I like. But that's again, cause they have flaws and they're more human than superhuman. Exactly. Because I feel like the second one would have done a lot better if the first one had been better. The yeah. first one was not good. To be fair, like for the from everything I've heard from the first one, mm-hmm. I've heard that they the studio kind of got its hands in, you know. Oh, I'm character. sure. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, anytime Marvel movies and, and big money movies like that fail, the blame is very much deserves to be spread around. You can't. <laughs> You can't. Like, I mean, how many directors have final cut on a Disney movie? Yeah, <laughs> you know, like yeah, it's just like, not you know, really. I, I would be curious to see like what his, you know, uh, his direct. But but I mean, overall too, like that was a much more um, darker tone versus like what this Suicide Squad. This was a lot had a lot more, you know, fun to it with like the characters. Yes. Um, but it, like it was still don't get me I wrong. Like that. Like dark well out. again, I prefer that. I mean, especially I, I think I'm just kind of burnt out on this whole darkness thing. Everyone's trying to out dark each other <laughs> and none of it is dark. Yeah. It's just hard to see. Yeah. That's yeah. about it. And I'm like, you guys don't know what darkness is. <laughs> like go go read like Legati or something and like tell me how you know i think it's just so that funny. dc for a while um which it seems like now they're maybe starting to get like a better like you know handle on that but i think for a while mm. you know that was kind of trying to separate themselves from marvel they were trying to go the more yeah. dark grittier realistic kind of take on it versus marvel well they were they were ripping off nolan <laughs> yeah cuz i mean just took that, what nolan did and that and, worked yeah well because that's nolan's style yeah that's what Nolan does. That's not what Batman does. Like Tim Burton, also two of the best Batmans of all time. Dark in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Like dark in a way that is still very fun. Even though there's some shit where you're like, oh my God, he really just bit that woman's nose off. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, I feel like you just gotta, 
you know, you, you got to trust the directors, you know, that you have on these projects that, that you pick for them and let them have their own, add their own flair, you know, rather than just I trying to. Totally, well, that's why you hired them. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, uh, I, I, I feel terrible because I haven't seen the director's cut of this yet, but what everyone has been saying about Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League as opposed to the theatrical version. My, so I, I, it's funny, I only have seen the director's cut. I actually did not see the original version that came out. So I can't, I can't compare, but everything that I, like people have told me who have seen both, they like the, the director's cut a lot more. Oh, there's, there, I mean, not having seen the director's cut, there's no way that it's not like a thousand times better than the theatrical. The theatrical version was kind of unwatchable, to be honest. Yeah. It was not, really, Yeah. I just didn't, yeah, at the time, I didn't really have, like, I was like, I remember seeing the trailers, and I was like, eh, like, it's just not something I was really interested in. Um, but then, yeah, then I heard, like, then everything happened with the, the Snyder cut, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I, oh, God, I yeah, it's funny, like, I, 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 I've never loved anything by Zack Snyder, except for his, his remake of Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead, yeah. Which is, which is great. I mean, he absolutely deserves a career for that movie for sure. Um, but I've always felt like his heart is in the right place for filmmaking. I've yeah. always felt like he really loves film. He really loves the material he works. Like even Watchmen, like Watchmen is very, very faithful. I didn't like the way he changed the ending. I like the ending in the comic way more. Yeah. But like it's very, very faithful it was made with care and respect for the source material. Yeah. And when I saw the justice league, I was like, I don't think this is a Zack Snyder film. <laughs> I think <laughs> this is a studio film. Yeah. Which like, I'm, I'm glad at least like, you know, we finally got to finally see his version. Like it's too yeah. bad. That, yeah. Uh, I mean, how many people get a chance to redeem their movies like that? I mean, that almost never happens. Yeah. So, I mean, that was, that whole situation was, you know, definitely, you know, happy for him that, you know, for him and, and just like the cast and the crew, because I mean, they worked, I imagine, you know, really hard on that. Cause like the, yes. the record comes like four, it's like four hours or something like that. So. Oh yeah. And those movies take forever to make. Yeah. So, it's so like much longer. Yeah. Stuff on the cutting room floor. So I'm definitely, I'm, I'm glad that yeah, we were able to at least, you know, see that. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. God, good for him because I know like he was dealing with like some personal tragedy too. Yeah. Like he's been through it, man. So I mean, I guess you kind of like got into that. I was gonna ask you, how did you, you know, prepare for the role of um oh. you know, Mildred as far as you know, um mannerisms changing like your voice up, you know, different things like that? Well, um I did do a lot of research on dementia and the because it affects, I mean, it, it affects your mind, but it, it affects your physicality as well. Yeah. And the way you kind of move through the world. And and because she had that affliction, and I, I don't know, I just, I, it was really important to me to get that right. Because anyone who has gone through something like that, I mean, it's like, it's it's insanely hard. It's one of the most heartbreaking things, yeah. you know. Um. And so, so that and, and the movement stuff and, um, a, a lot of Jessica Tandy <laughs> films. <laughs> no, I mean, I cause mean. yeah, I yeah. don't know. I just, she, cause, cause Je Jessica Tandy also has this thing that I wanted Mildred to have this kind of like, like small town. Mm, irreverence I guess yeah. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for like I don't know there's something about her that's kind of sprightly that I kind of really that I really loved I don't know no I, I love you know I love that you know it was like little little bit uh, tidbits of you know they bring to that actors like you know will bring to, or want to bring to you know a character yeah, they say if you're gonna steal steal from the best <laughs> <laughs> one of my one of my favorite things, you know, about which we kind of, I guess, like we, you know, talked about it a little bit, but, um, you know, one of my favorite things about is just like the, you know, relationships between the different characters, you know, on the show. 
Um, can you talk about the mother daughter, you know, dynamic between, you know, you and Annabeth Gish and uh, with your characters, Mildred and Sarah, was it, was it kind of like weird to, I imagine it was kind of weird to play this, you know, this older character. It, I mean, it was, it was really fun because I love Annabeth to death. Like she's so funny and she's so funny to work with. Um, and she's such a, like, I mean, she's been doing it forever, you know, like she's a master at this point. She's yeah. such a consummate professional that like, it's impossible not to be with her when you're in a scene, you know, she's so like, just present with you it's so it's so nice it's so generous um so she made it very easy actually like i have i have a very strong maternal side to me that even kind of surprises me sometimes but i love taking care of people i love cooking for people and and you know make i don't know making sure they're okay or something (laughs) and i really and i really kind of already am like that with annabeth because she's so nice she's so sweet and i'm so ready like if anyone is is like rude to my annabeth i'll rip their throat out coming after you yo yeah so i I kind of already so i just kind of took you know the the affection i already have for her and just just you know i mean in acting you know especially in in meisner which uh, is my favorite of all the techniques there's a, you know, very, mostly because of how, how pragmatic it is. But one of the exercises is something called an as if, which is just another word for, you know, use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, Annabeth is not my daughter, but it's as if she was. So yeah. however you would treat your own daughter, you just project that onto her. Annabeth makes it extremely easy for me to do that because I love her. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, that's really what, if, we're, if you're going to talk about like technique, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, and that, that must, you know, obviously go like a long way to like having a, you know, a great, you know, scene partner that makes it, you know, easier for, for you to do that, you know, like as well and being, you know, being that moment, being that character. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I have worked with actors that, that don't do that um because they don't know how and they're scared and they're focused on themselves and they want to make sure they look right and they do okay and all of this and it's very very uh selfish because you're only focusing on yourself you're not thinking you shouldn't be thinking about anything the only thoughts you should have are whatever the character's thoughts are yeah you know i'm thirsty i'm hungry who's this oh it's the person i love whatever it is going on not yeah. like, oh, it's my line. Oh, do I look okay? Oh my god, they were late picking me up this morning. Oh, they didn't get my breakfast right and all this fucking bullshit. You got like nothing to do with. It's not important at all. Yeah. Um, so that must, I mean, uh, that must have been yeah, definitely nice just to have someone so who's nice. done this for you know for. I some actually time. pushed an actor once. Oh yeah. Because they would the, not. This was when I was doing theater. This was like this was not on set. Yeah. Um. I actually have never had a situation like this on set, but no, it was this guy who was like, would not go there. Wouldn't do it. We were doing a scene where, you know, it's a married couple and I'm leaving him for someone else. And it's supposed to kind of crescendo to this place where he gets mad at me and screams at me. Yeah. Because I'm cheating on him. I'm leaving him for someone else. Like, you know, like what is like, if someone did that to you, you'd just fucking stand there. Yeah. And try to be cool. Someone you love. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Yeah. Like he's like, well, I just, you know, I can't because because at the very end of like the scene ends with the fight escalates to the point where he hits me. Now in acting, you don't actually hit someone. Yeah. Of course, as hard as you can. You 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 establish your boundaries beforehand, you rehearse the blah blah blah, whatever. Yeah. Would not do it. So I pushed him as hard as I could in the chest. <laughs> And he still didn't do it. Uh, he still didn't do it. I was like, "You make me sick. You sicken me." Yeah, I feel like I, I feel like why? It's almost like why? Like why would you be like an actor? Why are you an actor? Right? Yeah. Why do you want to be an actor? Well, I I think I think most people anymore want to be actors for the glory, the supposed glory. There's not a lot of actual glory. But it's like, but 
Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. It's just like, it's weird to me. You would, you know, you would think, I mean, like, obviously like it's a, it's a job, but you want to, you want to, you don't want to be like miserable, you know, doing this. Well, it's an, but it, like, it's a job. That's an art. Yeah. Like if you're a musician and you don't want to do the guitar solo, then why the fuck are you a guitarist? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> why? That's such a strange. Okay, I'll do the solo, but I'm going to unplug myself from the amp so no one can hear it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh. Okay. Is... <laughs> no, like, and, and, and I think a lot of people don't realize, like, how much this costs you and how much it's meant to. It's supposed to cost you something. Every yeah. performance is supposed to cost you something. Yeah. And when I watch a performance and it doesn't cost that actor anything, I get really mad. I feel robbed. Not I feel enough. insulted as an audience member. I came here to be told a story. Yeah, and you can tell not, when when someone's you know not giving it their all, you know, in a scene or just like yeah, or they're just like they're more concerned with how they look or how cool they come across or how cool they sound saying the lines, and they they already decided exactly how they're going to say them before they even go into the scene, and they already decided what they're going to do. And fuck, I hate working with actors like that. Yeah. <laughs> It's no, not, I mean, well, I, I don't even need to be here. I'll just get a fucking cat rack and you could talk to that. <laughs> like, pretty much. Yeah. That, that, that's, yeah, that, that I, I don't like get. That's, that, that's so <laughs> weird to me. It's like, I, I, yeah, it's so fun. Well, but I, because again, like the glory, the shine, yeah. it's a very shiny industry. And people, you can, people from yes. like, out, like outside might, it's like, oh, like, yeah, you're an actor, like, you know, you're famous. Wow, so glamorous. Yeah. You're famous. Oh my God, my first indie film. Are you a millionaire? <laughs> it's like, Are you a millionaire now? It doesn't work like that. <laughs> no, I got paid two grand for like a month of work. Yeah, it's it's not something. It's and like, that's how it goes. Yeah, it's not. I'm not. You, no one. I hope no one becomes an actor for the money. Yeah. Although, I, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there, there there probably is situations like that that happened maybe if your parents are maybe if like your mom's a casting director or something but yeah. i mean unless you are very well connected you have so many hoops to jump through it's not worth it the money is not worth it i i i didn't make money that i could live on without having to have any other job until doctor sleep yeah and i've been acting since i was six i was gonna say i, I yeah i you know, seeing different interviews with people and stuff like that. And just like, you know, a lot of factors like getting side jobs and different things like that. It's not just like, you know, you, you get lucky and just all of a sudden one day it's like, you know, you're making a, a million bucks. Yeah. Or like no, that. I mean, that happens to like 0.00003% of people. And those people don't last, you know, remember Tom Welling from Smallville? Yeah. Yeah, he was discovered in a restaurant. He did that show and one movie and never worked again. Wow, I didn't, I didn't, re I didn't realize because I, I loved like Smallville, like growing up. I didn't realize he was like discovered in a, a restaurant. Yeah, yeah, waiter in a restaurant. That, yeah. That's interesting, mm -hmm. but but yeah, now it's yeah, it's it, there, you know so many you know actors, especially like a lot of the you know like the indie projects and stuff like that. It's like I mean, you don't have these movies don't have these like big budgets. So it's like, how do you, how do you think that they're supposed to like afford, you know, <laughs> paying these people, these big, you know, contracts and things like right, that. Right. Exactly. Well, and, and indie films, I mean, indie films used to be like, you know, the great frontier for unknowns too. Not really the case anymore. Now it's pretty much just horror. Yeah. And stream streaming has changed that for sure. Because there's just so much content now, like that I'm constantly seeing, like every show. I'm like, who the fuck are all of these people? I don't know who, and not a single person before have I ever seen any of them. Yeah, no, yeah, in a way, streaming, um, you know, it's it's great to have, you know, like so much content, but at the same time, it's convenient, so certainly. We've almost gotten to the point where um, there's like too much, you know, content to pick from. Oh, is it yes, of course. Like, how are we even supposed to pay attention to all of this content? Yeah. So it's so like, much, and it's being made at such a rate that you know, it, it it's just they're just throwing them together and chucking them at the wall to see what sticks. Yeah. Although one one studio that I really, which I know they don't necessarily like, they don't 
I think they, they pick up like a lot of these films and, you know, brought to the studio, but um, like a 24. Oh yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm mostly talking about like streaming services. Yeah. Yeah. Studio. Okay. Like st- I, I, I never thought I would say this, but I actually like miss studios. Yeah. And I, I thought yeah. like, I, I love, um, and it, it's funny because like now, like, I feel like now they're kind of becoming almost like a little bit more mainstream, but that's um i mean like some of the you know like but a24 has still i think i like i like the fact that a24 has tried to maintain their kind of genre flirt like i just saw lamb uh recently have you seen that yet that was such a bizarre movie (laughs) it and and it was so close so close to being a great movie like so close i just have an issue with the end yeah that's it I could see that. I feel like no one knows how to end. No one knows how to end movies anymore. Yeah. Like I was everyone's like, okay, we'll get here and then we'll just stop. We'll just stop. We'll just be over. We'll just cut to the credits. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't like a huge fan of it. Um, and, and I like for the most part, I, I usually like a lot of like the, the slow burn, you know, like horror. The stuff sure. For does. But for some reason, yeah, Lamb just didn't. didn't stick I feel like reason. if the payoff had been better. Yeah, the, everything that led up to it would have been a little more justified. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're really going to take your time like that, you better show me something I haven't seen before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because there yeah. was there's points where I was like, I mean, like I get you know, getting to see you know, being these characters' lives, and I was like, I, I just felt like there wasn't a lot like really like happening. I'm like, all right, no, <laughs> you know, there really wasn't until, like, and, so, and I, I understand that it's meant to say like, oh, there's nothing going on in their lives until the slam shows up. Yeah. But they're still like human beings. There's still like people who talk. And I was like, does it, has this woman just not smiled <laughs> in the past three years or however long it's been? Yeah. <laughs> she really just not smiled at all. Yeah. There's, you know? There's stuff in there like, um, I mean, some of my like recent favorites from them, like, uh, I mean, several years ago now, but like The Witch, like I, oh. I love The Witch. It's still I, one of my favorites. That was, so, uh, I mean, Robert Eggers is on another level, though. I mean, yeah, that, I, I, he I is like a dream. For, uh, the the Norsemen to come out, you know, this year. That looks yeah. like insane. I'm excited. So, well, I thought The Lighthouse was brilliant. I fucking loved The Lighthouse. I like I. I wasn't as big as fan of the lighthouse compared to like, I like the witch more. Um, but I, sure. I thought the performances, like I thought the performances were fantastic. It was oh just God. something about the, like it was so bizarre. Like I remember walking out of it. And I was just like, what the hell did I just watch? Well, so I mean, I think that's also because stylistically he's trying, like he made it, he filmed it as if it was a silent film, but with <laughs> sound. Yeah. Um, but, but I, I mean, I thought I thought both of them should have won Best Actor that year. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, the performance. And they both should have shared it. I mean, it was uh, it was unbelievable. And the thing that I really, again, like, even if like, even if you don't love all of his films, like the fact that he has everything period correct down to the dialogue, down to the way the costumes are made, and yeah. nothing is nothing is included that is extraneous. Yeah, it's so exquisitely constructed his stuff, and I really respect that in an age where everyone's just trying to like it's like the gold rush. They're just kind of like trying to throw things together. Yeah, and hopefully, you yeah. know, I mean, the things that win awards now, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to talk myself out of a career or anything. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. terrible. I'm such a fucking naysayer. Anyone who like is not familiar with me or doesn't know this about me, I am very much like a pessimist as a person <laughs> I just damn like i think to live is to suffer and it's all just a bleak exercise but it doesn't mean you can't have fun yeah in fact you really should have fun <laughs> more, more than ever you really should take this time to have fun alex um you know with like your, your character i love the uh you know the the re- reveal of the relationship you know between your character and father paul um, you know, what was it like, you know, you mentioned him like a little bit, you know, like earlier, but what was it like, you know, work with, with, uh, with Hamish, like in those, in those roles or in those scenes, I should say. Oh, he's, it's so, Hamish is really funny because he's very, again, like very sardonic, very witty, very yeah. funny, but he had, you can, 
you and you feel it when you work with him he really has like this really big sensitive broken heart underneath everything and it's it's very arresting to work with i have to say i couldn't believe um you know just like some of the you know like the, the sermons and stuff like that that he had to deliver um you know just being you guys being you know in like the the church and stuff like that i mean that must have been so crazy to just like witness you know like firsthand like it's a lot of this show which I, i've seen some people where it's you know they're like oh like there's a lot of dialogue i i love the dialogue um but like there's some really dialogue heavy scenes and it's like i imagine that's that's not that's not an easy not even monologue heavy yeah, <laughs> like monologue, yeah. monologue heavy scenes but at the same, it's funny because I mean I've heard that too, but I I like the fact that he actually has monologues in his stuff. Yeah, no, I I, I thought that and, was you know fascinating. Yeah, and I and I like the fact that he writes the stuff himself, and and I feel like he gives he gives those things to people who can handle them. Yeah, you know Hamish can handle it. Yeah, Kate Siegel, Kate Siegel can handle it. You know what I mean? She can do it and it's like nothing. It's like she's just thinking of it in the moment, you know? Me, like, not being, you know, an actor myself, I'm, I'm watching those scenes where you guys are, you know, delivering these big, you know, these monologues and I'm just like, holy shit, like, all of that stuff to try and, like, remember as you're doing, you know, doing your lines. I'm like, that, that must just be a pain in the ass. You gotta just run the shit out of them because because the last thing you want to do when you get to set is go um fuck yeah what's my line we got to start that from the beginning because Mike also likes to do long unbroken takes mm -hmm. which I also love I love it I hate things that are over edited I love people who just let moments breathe and he's so good for that yeah um but. Yeah, I mean, Hamish was, like, so on top of it. And it's so hard, again, to, to have that amount of, of words and make it, make it sound like you've never said them before, even though you have to run them hundreds of times. Oh, yeah. It's really... I, but, but Hamish, I mean, Hamish, again, is, like... He's the real deal. I mean, his whole background is in Broadway, not musical theater, real, actual Broadway yeah. theater. Um, and he's been working forever. And I mean, I, you know, the guy's done Ibsen and Shanley and <laughs> all those guys. Yeah. So, I mean, so yeah. and they are dialogue heavy. Like theater is very dialogue and monologue heavy. It's nothing like what the way film scripts are now. So you can very casting and yeah, it's a completely different. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it's a different animal too because you're you're saying it to a live audience and they're sharing that with you, and you can't do special effects on stage. Yeah. Just be so like, much. Hold on a second, guys. Let me. Uh, I forgot my lines. Hold on, I was, uh, sorry, I just got to put my green suit on. Yeah, I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right back. Uh, now we're going to begin our fourth intermission. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now do you think um do you, like do you think that Mildred would have ever revealed that John was Sarah's father if it wasn't for the events that unfolded in Midnight Mass because we no. we no you don't think so I don't think she well she by when it starts she already has dementia yeah that's true yeah if she hasn't told her by then she she was probably never planning on selling her and I understand why I mean what good would that do her yeah that to know that i mean she loves her dad he was a really good dad to her really good husband yeah just uh, at this point like in in her life to yeah the priest yeah. you know father paul's about to die we're all about to die yeah you know what, what good would it really do and, and that and that's mildred's justification for it just you like, know su suffering in silence yeah it's like uh, just like i was like thinking of that it's like you know she's had this secret you know her whole life and then you know all this you know shit kind of like hits the fans like would she have ever you know revealed that secret but i mean that's a good point with where she kind of you know she has like you know dementia and stuff like now that probably yeah. wouldn't have brought up but even if she didn't like would she have wanted to 
do that to her um, daughter. And I think that's why Mildred is a way more mature person than I am. <laughs> like, <laughs> You know, because what what would really be the point of telling her just to unburden herself? Yeah. Or something, you know? I mean, it's... I really do think that it, she believes that that's the, 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 the most humane and best thing for her daughter, for her daughter to believe. And I, I think... I don't know. I, I think that that's... I think that's a decision a lot of parents would make. You know, we're always told that honesty is the best policy and it is it is absolutely yeah. but telling exactly the truth all the time in every situation is not a good policy at all yeah no 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 and take it as someone who knows all too well how much people do not appreciate that yeah <laughs> I was, there's, there's definitely situations where they don't thank you for being honest with them and i mean honestly i mean me too yeah no, there's like don't get me <laughs> wrong. Nice to hear that shit. Yeah, you know that's it's why not... we sugarcoat things and soften the blow and pick our moments and things like that. It's out of it's out of sometimes it's out of concern for ourselves. I I like to believe it's usually out of concern for others. I guess I know that's not really that pessimistic of me. <laughs> I should probably rethink my stance on this. Come on, <laughs> Alex. Yeah, I know. Jeez, what am I doing now? Now I'm being nice all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm kidding. You can be. You can be nice and be a pessimist. You can be a very nice pessimist. One thing that I wanted to, like, I really want to talk to you about. Um, you know, you get to like towards like the end of the series, and you know, you have the uh, the massacre like at the church. Um, what a, I mean, I'm sure that must have taken like a while. And I like when I was talking like Crystal, like you guys, like you know, it was broken down into several you know parts. Um, yeah. Can you just like yeah, it took about a couple of weeks, I think, to film just like that scene yeah. like itself. The log, yeah, or maybe one week. It's all a blur now. But like, yeah. So I mean, yeah, I, I imagine the level of like anticipation when you guys were getting ready, like you knew you were going to be filming that scene. There was a lot of you know just like really excited to do it because there's a lot that happens in there. Um, yeah. It's like from your aspect or your perspective, like what. Can you, can you like break down that you know shooting that whole like kind of sequence a little a little bit? I mean, so I mean they they did film it in sequence. Um, you know, we taking us up. You know, it was it, it was really divided into two parts: the the before the blood and after the blood bath. So um, so man, and 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 the thing is, like the majority of the people in the church are stunt people. <laughs> Like most of them are stunt people, um, mostly stunts and actors. Uh, but man, I mean, it was it, it 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 was cool because everyone was so on the same page with where we were in the story. You really got this like collective anxiety going on when it's like amping up, and then like Sturge goes up, and you're like, "What the fuck?" and he dies. Yeah, and you're like, okay, someone just died, and then it amps up, and then he gets up again, and we're like, what the fuck? And then that fucking angel shows up, and then we all start fighting amongst ourselves because things are starting to become unhinged. And so, anyway, it it was very palpable <laughs> in the church filming that stuff. It, I I I felt. Personally, I mean, and and I I think this is evidenced in 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 everyone's performances, but I felt very plugged in to what was going on, which doesn't always happen outside of you, you know. Yeah. Like you have to make yourself believe what's happening, but it's not always that easy. But damn, I thought I was gonna have a panic attack. <laughs> like when we were getting up to the point where I shoot the angel, I was like, ah. Oh yeah, like yeah, when you got to that point where you know you you face off against the angel and then the angel comes and swoops you up. Swoop. <laughs> yeah. What and actually that is the only uh CGI that they use in the show. When the angel like, like, grabs you with the angel actually grabbing me and, and flying out of the church with me, they did do um what is that where they, they take like thousands of pictures of every angle of your body? Oh, okay. Um what is that called? um 
Uh, God, I'm such an actor. I, I can't remember any of these technical terms. <laughs> That's I remember okay. lines. If I was playing a scientist, maybe I would remember them. would know that. <laughs> uh, you're very sweet to laugh at that. Um, but, uh, but no, that was, that was the only time. And then I'm not in the church uh, until the end. Yeah, yeah. Until after the fact. When that happened, I was just like, oh. I was like, as soon as you like, you know, you had the gun there, I was like, no, Alex. And then, no, don't do it. You yeah. shoot the man I love in the face. Yeah, it gets, uh, you know, picked up by like the angels. So that now was, so I, I know you said like you use like, there was like, you know, like CGI or whatever. Uh, did yeah. you use, was there a stunt actor, like actress used for you at all, like in that scene? Or oh. was that totally, yeah. Okay. Definitely. No, for that, for that, I wasn't really doing any other stunts. I, I did have, uh, I did have a stunt person for one thing and I can't remember what it was, but knowing me, it's probably that part. And I just don't <laughs> remember, but I don't think so. Like there wasn't really much to it. I just had to shoot him and then make a motion as if I was being like pulled back really fast. Yeah. And then they cut there and they, they fill in the rest. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Um, super crazy. No, <laughs> no, no, I've done way worse stunts than that. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, this, like I said, so I, this show and which you know it's funny we were just like kind of talking about like you know slow burns and then you know sometimes like not necessarily have having like a payoff. This was one of those like a, a great example where it has like that you know that slow burn, but then you know shit like really hits the fan. You know, oh after. such a great payoff! Like I even felt that when I was watching it, and I I have a horrible time watching stuff that I'm in it it, it makes me like it gives me that like existential nausea yeah no I, I I I totally get well from a different perspective but I mean like me doing you know like when I do videos and stuff and have yeah. to edit things afterwards I'm like I just <laughs> oh absolutely exactly the same <laughs> it's exactly the same thing it's totally the same oh god I can't believe I sound like that I can't believe I look like that what am I doing what yeah. face am I making I shouldn't have made that choice. Oh, fuck me. Well, you know, like normally I have to watch something I'm in once just to get all that bullshit out of the way. And then I can watch it like without <laughs> being totally <laughs> insecure. Enjoy well, it. Yeah, yeah. Then it, then it kind of like, okay, I can be a little more objective, you know, because because I do, I mean, I do like to watch my golf swing. Yeah. I do like to watch it and see like, okay, like did I commit to that fully? Was that the strongest choice I could have made? Yeah. Like that kind of stuff, you know, which I think is important to do. Yeah. Cause I know some, and which I like, I understand, like, I, I know some people don't like to watch like any of their stuff that they've, you know, they filmed or whatever, at least probably more so like once it comes out and it's like officially. Sure. Uh, sure yeah. In theaters or whatever. <laughs> you know, um, for, for you, I guess, you know, the, the series they had, I mean, so many great, you know, moments like overall, um, but what was your favorite or in your opinion, the most important scene for your character? Well, I mean, the, I, I think the obvious answer is the the scene with Father Paul and I in the church talking about our past. Yeah. <laughs> that That is kind of where we lay it all out. Um, but, but for Mildred, like for Mildred, for her, the most important scene, I think, is when she comes out of her her fog of dementia and and sees her daughter for the first time in in who knows how long. I mean, she actually opens her eyes and recognizes her daughter, who who is her true love. I mean, you know, she she loved her dad. She was in love with the priest, but her daughter is you know it's her child. That's yeah. that that that's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, and pff, man, that scene. Even now, even just talking about it, it's like, oh my god, that was a that scene like rocked me. And I don't like I'm usually pretty good at like dropping stuff when I'm done. Like, okay, emotional scene, time to go home. Bye, everyone. Yeah, but there's but but yeah, this one was like I had to like hold it for a second. I was like, <laughs> I was yeah. no, I, I, I totally. I mean, it was a beautiful scene, and like you know, just thank you having you know ha like imagine like ha like having that happen you know a as like a person like you know that i just can't imagine like the level of emotion so i 
that's completely right. well and that's where as if really really comes in handy because i don't know what it's like to come out of the fog of dementia and see my daughter for the first time in 10 years or however long you know no one knows what that's like except for a few people yeah and even those people can't necessarily talk about what it feels like you know yeah um and what i really like about Meisner in general and that technique is is that you can surprise yourself which is kind of what you're hoping for you're hoping for that miracle on set where you take yourself by surprise and you just kind of ride it out you know I'm sure like in the moment you're like oh man like I really hope you know you hope that it you know it, it plays out the way that you're you want yeah, it to well, you, you're like yes <laughs> do but you also it's also it's also a trap to hope it plays out a certain way because that means that you start having an idea of, of how you want it to look and how you want it to go and once you get into that trap you can't surprise yourself yeah because, because you're not in response to the person you're in the scene with the, the the surprise comes from your reaction to them in to that, what like they're giving moment. you and and yeah and what your relationship to their to them is and your history and and when you believe it when you get to a place where you you aren't thinking at all you just believe your imaginary circumstances that's 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 when the surprise happens because you're not thinking you're not controlling you're just allowing all the work that you already did you're trusting that it's there and you're just letting it come out of you yeah and that's kind of the secret i think to make it, make it easier, I said uh, easier said than done. I feel like. Oh God, it's so fucking. That's the hardest thing to do is yeah. to not. I mean, acting defies all natural instincts of of self preservation. <laughs> you have to run toward the crisis and not away from it. You know, yeah. you have to feel things that most people try to shut down and not feel. As well, they should. That's exactly what they should do. I mean, this is why actors are so crazy. <laughs> it's totally, it's so totally unnatural. Yeah, to to do, yeah. Which is, which again is why pragmatism is so important, so that you don't get in like this downward spiral of, oh, I'm too in it, I'm too in the thing, blah blah blah. blah. That's why I, that's a big problem I have with the method. I think it's incredibly unhealthy. Yeah. And my official advice, if anyone's wondering, if you want to get into acting, don't fuck with the method. It's a waste of your time. It'll just make you self-centered, and self-indulgent couple more things, you know, to, to wrap things up, Alex, because I know, you know, you're obviously, uh, you know, you're, you're busy too. Oh, oh yeah. Midnight, midnight Mass <laughs> it has, you know, its fair share of scares, uh, both, you know, with uh, supernatural and, um, you know, human-like elements as well. For you, like, mm -hmm. I have an idea of kind of like after, you know, having this conversation where you kind of stand, but um, for which one, are, for which, for you, which one is scarier and why? I think you do know what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, real life stuff is way scarier to me. Way scarier. One of actually one of my biggest fears is mobs. I mean, that, like, that's a legit fear. Big crowd. Yeah, especially now. Yeah. But like big, big unruly crowds. Terrify. I won't go near them. I don't give a shit how noble the cause is. I was like, have fun. Yeah. Outside. No, I mean that's. I mean because you just, you just don't know what like what. Can what if happen. there's a stampede? Yeah. What if you know like it's yeah. crazy? I mean even like even concerts. I love going to shows, like smaller shows. Like that was one. That's one thing I really miss about living in LA is like there's so many cool little cute music venues all over the place to see cool bands and stuff. Yeah. Um, arenas freak me out. Oh. Um. But even then, like even those little buildings, like I always know where the exits are. I don't go into the pit anymore. Oh yeah. Because I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. Like I'm not 20. I'm not like, I gotta get to the front. I gotta right in the front. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like I'll just like hang out back here. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. The whole like when you used to like kind of like weave through people. Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me, I'm gonna stand here now. You just kinda like shift your way, you know, like, oh God, what a pain in the ass. <laughs> like, now no, now I'm like, like covering near the exit like just in case yeah, so yeah. 
little like, escape plan. Yeah, no, yeah. I, mean, I think that's a, you know, a legit, you know, fear for sure. And yeah, like, so I kind of have a feeling that, you know, uh, the character of Bev, like, in, you know, in this case, in the show. Yeah, I, people probably, like Bev scare me way more her. than, oh yeah, yeah, people like Bev scare me way more than the idea of a monster or a vampire or, because I don't, I don't believe in any of that stuff. I don't believe in the supernatural. I don't believe in ghosts. And I don't really believe in anything, honestly. <laughs> I generally don't. Um, but that, but uh, like, that's just a, a human being who is so dead set, you know, like in her, her beliefs and, and just the well, way. Yeah, that that's why it's scary. The pe- I, I don't know why people look at being unmutable as a good thing. Like I have my thing and I never change and I always stay that way. And this is the way it is. And you're either with us or against us. You either believe it or you don't. And if you don't, you're evil and all of this binary nonsense. Yeah. No, and yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And I think the scary part, cause I mean, it, different things that have happened, you know, throughout the uh, history, but you know, you see, you know, some of the other characters, you know, as the show's kind of going on and starting to get, you know, caught up in, in these beliefs and what, you know, um, you know, whether yeah, it's well, especially with like a little bit of proof, yeah, a little bit of miracle, you know, yeah, and all of a sudden anything is okay that is yeah. in support of the miracle, and they're just like, oh, okay, well, like now they have you know a reason to kind of you know believe that this is the the right way to go about this, and you know, yeah, what we're doing is right, even though there's like so many red flags that start popping up, you know, especially as you start getting later. Yeah the show and that's how it happens too like oh i don't know about like i don't feel good about that but it is for a good reason and our cause is noble so i'll overlook it or like they only did it to a bad person a bad person being someone who doesn't think the way i do yeah yeah and which is what i really love about the thesis of of that show too and i and i mean i Oh, actually, another cool moment for Mildred that I thought was was I mean, especially for for developing her, is the fact that she goes running out of the church because she's so disgusted. Yeah, no, by I, what it's become and how brainwashed everyone is. No, yeah, I, I thought that was a a really cool because if yeah, if I'm trying to remember because um, at that point the audience. Yeah, at that point, if I remember correctly, at that point, the audience didn't know, but you kind of got a hint there that there was something between. Yeah, ominous, because she's like, that's not my church. Yeah, or that's not the the guy that I like knew or or the man I knew or something like that. That's not the man I knew. No, it's not. Yeah. No, the man I knew would have died with dignity. Yeah. So like, no, that that, that, I thought that was a a great moment, too. And I guess when you go and go back and rewatch the series you know, obviously you, you know what happened. So you kind of have like, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. but being able to pick out these little details when, um, you know, Father Paul like ends up visiting your character kind of like early on, you know, when you're, you're still older and, you know, he's doing like the, you know, sermons like by your bed. Um, yeah. Just the way that he get like at one point he gives her this look and, you know, going back and watching that second time, you're like, oh, OK, like that, you know, that makes, you know, more sense going back, knowing what happens at the end now. It's like there's definitely yeah. you know, history there and a story there with those characters. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's it. And that was really fun to explore, too. I mean, that that theme of unrequited love or things unsaid or things never known between people and stuff like it's a it's it's an interesting theme to me and it's it's heartbreaking and it's interesting to explore like when he comes in and i see him because i'm you know because i'm i'm cogent again yeah and it's like that well like again like it's such an as if like it's as if someone that you were in love with 50 years ago came into your room as a as they looked when you fell in love with them. Yeah. I mean, like, oh, oh. Man, that's the ultimate fantasy for so for me. I mean, my God, like I'm, I'm, I'm with someone that is probably the person I'm going to be with. And the idea, like the idea that we didn't, that we haven't known each other since we were kids mm-hmm. makes me angry. Like it upsets me. 
both of us like why didn't we know each other sooner and why didn't we get to spend all that time together and why didn't we you know know each other at all these phases of our lives and and I mean I really can't say for certain if I wouldn't take an opportunity like that if I had the chance oh yeah like, it's yeah. I mean I already know like looking down the road when we're both old I would absolutely do that yeah <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, let's I, do it all over again. Yeah, I, I feel like it would be, you know, people can say whatever, but I feel like you would. It'd be hard to find people that probably wouldn't take, you know, an opportunity like that if it was, you know, presented to them. Well, I mean, there's there's quite a few people trying to develop technology to do just that. Yeah. So I mean, and that's great. And great. That's, that's becoming a thing. Yeah, that's becoming a reality. People are. People are rich. People, you know, are like freezing themselves. <laughs> Which I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, between you and me, yeah. I would, I would, I would sign up for like a San Junipero thing, though, where it's like your consciousness gets uploaded into like this virtual paradise. Really? And you just kind of like, yeah. Did do, do you know what I'm talking about? That Black Mirror episode? No. So I, I've. Oh, I've sorry. Never- no, no, it's fine. I, I haven't You've seen. Never Black, seen Black Mirror. I haven't seen Black Mirror like at all. So, really? Oh, yeah. you, you. There are some. There. I mean, not all episodes are created equal, but there are some really good ones. And Sandra DePero, I think, won an award or something. But basically, it's about these two young women who meet in this little seaside community and fall in love with each other, and realize that they're soulmates and then you come to find out that they're both like little old ladies with these chips in their in their head and when they so so they can go there anytime they can go to this place and be young and it's just like the real world kind of like the matrix you know yeah yeah but nice (laughs) but like the best not just like the shitty world (laughs) um so yeah I guess yeah. yeah. There's like a there's a paradise aspect to it, you know. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, so- and anyone can go there. It's like a thing. Like everyone can do it. You you yeah. you can pick what era you want to be in. You can pick what part of the world you want to be in. It's like a customizable thing. Okay. If you explaining it like yeah, breaking it down like that, then that yes, that I I might be interested. Yeah, in something like that too. That would be cool. If I don't know the difference. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No. Although, who knows what I would be missing out on if I did pick that? Yeah. Who knows what happens? Yeah, you, you, you don't know. But I mean, if you're, yeah, I'll say, I guess you don't really know. But if you're in, you know, you think it's like your perfect world, it's, yeah, you're not going to know what you're kind of, you know, missing, on, missing out on. Well, and there's also this this really great quote. Um, I want to say it's by Emerson, but it's not. It's It's by like one of his peers. But basically, he talks about, you know, if man were to live forever, he would live long enough to see everything he cherishes uh, turn to shit and everything he thought to be true turn to lies and every, you know, and he said, in place of this, we have death. And I thought, now it is worth looking up the full quote. It's far more poetic and profound than I, than I (laughs) represent it now, because I'm not a 19th century philosopher, but (laughs) Um, That's all right. but 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 there is something to that you know we all fear death because of its inevitability and our lack of control over it and we don't want to get old and feeble because it's not fun and it doesn't feel good and we become irrelevant and there's all of that and yeah and but at the same time like is it better not to die yeah if you're just yeah alive forever and say is it doesn't it kind i mean aren't we supposed to die to make room for the actual younger generation also do we want a planet of seven billion people to be living forever i'd say you have a hell of a population problem (laughs) right exactly (laughs) well exactly and i'm sure if they were to have any technology like this it would be for the elites yeah no, or something yeah. like that but it, it i don't know it seems like such a it seems like the reality of that would be something more akin to like you know the old ladies in brazil or like death becomes her or something like that like it would be probably pretty grotesque yeah i don't know yeah that that that's like a question it's like oh would you would you want to live like if you had the opportunity like drink like fountain of youth or you know something like that would you want to live forever and it's like yeah 
like i'm sure it would be fun for a while like i'm sure like you know it's like oh but at the same time there's you know yes. everyone that you love would die all yeah. the time yeah that that part not, not not so much all the time i mean unless you could find a way to share the the gift of life with them but then how it turned i mean how long until that turned sour yeah which and you start to hate each other which kind of funny enough kind of like ties into you know like midnight mass with uh yes you know him with my final yeah just uh, that's the way it's supposed to be life. well right we had our chance we lived our lives we made our choices and now it's done yep um and it's you know i think one of the reasons religion is so popular i'm paraphrasing hitchens now but it's because everybody hopes that in their case an exception can be made mm-hmm. maybe i'm special enough that i don't have to die yeah no i i agree with that yeah and it's i mean it's not it's bleak you know yeah life would be unbearable without our delusions yeah. about it it's like oh no the one day you're, you're just gonna die yeah i mean some people have you know I mean? it's not i mean it's 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 why you know the whole atheist movement didn't i mean it really caught on but not quite to the extent of we still want to believe in something though we still want to feel like we have something to look forward to after we die yeah which i don't know if that's such a great way to live I feel like people would take this life a lot more seriously if they weren't just like ah, i'll just wait i'll just wait till paradise yeah, yeah, I'll say, well, you, but yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't know what's, you know, what's going to happen. So it's like, yeah, you definitely got to. And whatever happens, it's not going to be this again. Yeah. Completely. You know, whatever it is. Yeah. Unless you, unless you subscribe to like Vonnegut's philosophy on time, which is that it's a flat circle and we just keep reliving the same life over and over <laughs> again. <laughs> that but, love. I mean, if I was like super rich, that would be great. <laughs> yeah yeah you know i don't know if everyone wants to live their life the life they're living over and over again yeah no, no they, really if they don't want to yeah that would definitely be like a circumstantial you know kind of thing i'm sure depending How cool. on what an evil universe we would live in if that were the case just on one giant giant loop yeah do you have fun we do one more time no no, no. <laughs> everything's you can't change anything you have to just watch it happen again yeah no that that would suck. <laughs> Fuck that, that. Would, that would really well that because that leads into the whole idea of fate which i outright reject yeah no yeah i don't where basically where it's like yeah your your fate is this and you can't change like anything about it based like that yeah fuck you yeah, like, oh, yeah I, don't. I already have a problem with authority yeah. to begin with no I, like, I don't agree with that yeah either no, yeah. I think that's a bunch of bunch of bullshit yeah, I think most philosophies are. And then you have solipsists, which are like, everything is a figment of my imagination. I'm the only one that exists. Nothing else exists but me. Yeah, no, but I, I was just like... Oh. But no, I mean, also, honestly, this is so overdue. I'm I'm happy to have a lengthy... I was happy to have a lengthy... Yeah, chat, no, thank you. you. Know? I appreciate it. No, yeah, it's... Of course, it's, yeah. Any, any time, any time for you, Pat. Yeah, no, I mean, you were, you know, you're always, you know, welcome back, you know, on the show. Um, so, I mean, thank you. Obviously, I'm so relieved to hear that. Yeah. Pat is way too nice of a guy to say anything, but he's been trying to have a talk with me for five months, Pat. Yeah, uh, say, so yeah, what, October, yeah, October? Yeah, about five months or so. And, 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 not only that, but I have flaked a couple times. And I don't mean like, sorry, dude, I can't do it. I mean, like, I didn't show up. Like, I didn't log on. Like, the flake that I am. Okay. So, Pat, you want the scoop on anything? You want to know the shit talk about all the A-listers? I don't know it. <laughs> I know, like, a couple things. I'll tell it to you. Whatever you want to know. Hey, I... I, I guess I, I just had that determination. I was like, you know what? We are, we're going to make this happen, Alex. It's, it's I am so glad you didn't give up on me. It really was. It really was. Oh, God. And I would see it and I'd be like, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> and I, yeah. and I, I know how things, you know, like work too. Like, I mean, obviously. Yeah. You know. I mean, yeah, things get tumultuous, but I don't, I, 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 I appreciate that very much. I, I don't, I don't want to lean on too many excuses, but. I really appreciate your patience with me. You are so incredibly classy. 
Thank um, and it's always such a pleasure to talk to you, man. You know, someday in the future, I know, I think I'd saw that, uh, I don't know, a week or a couple weeks ago or something you had posted about doing like a con. It's like, hopefully at some yes. point you, you come up, uh, closer to like, you know, like this area. Cause it would be, it would be so fun to, you know, finally like catch up and I would love. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Some in-person time would be great. I'll, I'll keep you posted. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm up around the new England area, I'll hit you up for sure. Awesome. Well, Hey, yeah. uh, is there any, and just to wrap things up, you know, too, is there anything else that, you know, as always, Alex, uh, you know, that you want to, you know, say to the fans, you know, say about, you know, midnight mass, like overall and, you know, where, where can, again, like, I know you probably can't speak on a lot of stuff, if anything, but where can fans catch you, you know, next? Okay. So there is actually one thing I can talk about that I'm really, really excited about. I haven't heard about when this is coming out yet, but in back in September, I filmed a movie in Utah and it's really fucking cool and I'm really excited about it. Um, it's about these five girls who go up to work on this weed farm like up in Humboldt County back yep. in like 2014 when it wasn't legal and it was still super, super sketchy up there. Yep. So they go up there and the farm is owned by this like older sort of matriarchal woman. And we're all so happy. Like, yay, it's a chick. It's not like some sketchy dude who's going to harass us or steal from us or whatever. And it's so much worse. Okay. So much worse. I won't say too much, yeah. but I will say it has like this kind of like midsummer vibe to it. Like it's that kind of like supernatural evilness. Ooh, okay. Yeah, okay. it, it's cool. And it's directed by um, this really cool chick that I actually used to make music videos with back oh. in the day in LA. Wow. Uh, her name is Ariel. Yeah. And and um, Ariel Vitas. She's super cool. She's very legit. She actually did all the music videos or continues to. She does all the music videos for uh, Lord Byron. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this sounds like, yeah, I am totally, um, so you don't, yeah, you said it doesn't have like a, a release date or anything like as of like right now. It doesn't, I know that they're, they want to do the, they want to do festival rounds first. I know they were talking about trying to go to South by, I really hope that's what's going on, but I don't know what the post process has been like. Yeah. But, right. um, the lead in it is this girl that I want everyone to look up. Her name is Beth Million. Beth Million. She knocked my socks off. This was like her second or third project. And okay. she's very, very, very good. Um, she graduated from NYU. But before that, she was like, she's from Ethiopia, but she was raised in Switzerland. And she studied acting at NYU. And, and she's an amazing R&B singer as well. Wow. And I, yeah, I was, I, I was very pleasantly surprised. I, I have not met a lot of actors like like Beth. So if any, any of you guys watching, please go check her out on Instagram and Twitter and stuff. I will definitely, I'll say after this, you know, I'll have to go, you know, go check her out. Like for sure. It's always oh, cool. Yeah. You get to see like a, uh, you know, actors, you know, like one of their first, like, you know, kind of like big world, big breakout uh, roles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and this is and 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 this was not an easy part for her to carry, either. She did a very good job, and I got to play her best friend. Oh, okay. All which right. Is really, yeah, really fun and really easy to do. Definitely, yeah. I can't wait to see this. So once, yeah, once you're able to, um, yeah, definitely let me know. You know when the for sure. Let's have like for sure. A, it's called uh, it's called trim season. Trim season. Okay. So uh, and and whenever I have any. Anyway. Whenever I have any updated info, I will probably post about it. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I'm not the best about that stuff, but I will try <laughs> to keep you guys informed. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, hey, yeah. again, Alex, you know, thank you, you know, so much. It's 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 a blast, you know, having you on every time, you know, just getting oh, to uh, talk all things about, you know, your projects and just, you know, nerd out on uh, you know, movies. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah. I, I appreciate you letting me get on my soapbox <laughs> no 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 problem. i'm so starved for human attention i just love like oh, all the things i want to say <laughs> hey no like I said anytime <laughs> you're you're totally welcome and um yeah again like i said i know you're busy so thank you for uh for making the time to, to do this too my it's my pleasure pat thank you very much
Hey, what's up? This is Alex Esso. You're watching Pop Culture with my boy Pat Ratatat, where it's at. Follow him or else. Also, I was in some movies.